Australian as they come, that's Holden. Episode 44, September 1944. Colin and Vic are working on a gun camera mount just as they are relieved. The latest scuttle, but is the war might be over very soon. Yeah, Colin. <sighs> Looks as though the Jerrys have been pushed out of France and the Russians and the Yanks are pushing them back to Germany. I've been thinking, Vic, when the war is over, General's house will be going into some sort of shutdown while they refit ready for making cars again. Yes. I suppose we should be thinking about it and what we might do after the war. I was thinking, as we work so well together, why don't we go into something like making electrical goods or radio sets, etc.? Yes. That would be good. Let's give that some more thought over the coming weeks. Yes, let's. Joy and Elsie's flat, East Malvern. Tea is ready, Elsie. Thanks, Joy. My turn to do the dishes tonight. Yes. I've been thinking about how I can help the war effort. Oh, um, what is that? You already do the Red Cross packing. I think I will join General Motors. They produce needed equipment like planes and boats to help defeat the Japanese. Oh yes, I think that's a good idea. I think I will join you. After all, the tea room have got us on part time now that things have gone down. So let's do it. Yes, let's. Coyle's house lunchtime. Lunch is ready, Thelma. Thank you, Mother. For what we are about to receive, may the Lord make us truly thankful. Amen. Amen. How are you coping, Mother, now that Uncle Fred is only calling in a couple of days a week and Colin only comes by on weekends? Oh, not too badly. I keep myself busy with the house and garden and I still do Red Cross work. Could you switch on the radio, please, love? Yes, Mother. Here is the news. British on Dutch frontier. Swift American advance in Luxembourg Duchy. All out attack on Le Havre. From Geoffrey Hutton, Special Staff Correspondent of the Argus by Wireless from France. British Second Army troops in Belgium have at one point smashed through German defence lines behind the Albert Canal and have crossed the Escart Canal, almost on the Dutch frontier. Other British forces are reported to have begun an all-out attack on the Channel Port of Le Havre. America's first army forces, after a swift advance through the Ardennes Hills, have liberated Luxembourg, capital of the Duchy of Luxembourg. The Allies have thus reached another point within 10 miles of the frontier of Germany. Heavy fighting is reported in the vicinity of Luxembourg. Farther north, Allied troops are thrusting through the Ardennes to a German border near Aachen. Mounting knockout blow against Japan. Quebec conference. From Theo Moody, special correspondent of the Argus by wireless from Quebec. Preparation of a knockout blow against Japan this year and the administration of a defeated Germany will be the two main topics for discussion between Mr. Churchill and President Roosevelt. This 
is the general opinion here, but it is expected that later questions will arise on the delineation of new German frontiers and zones of British, American and Russian control. It is expected also that President Roosevelt and Mr. Churchill will discuss the possibility of settling the Polish-Soviet differences and that there will be a strong bid for a compromise between the two powers. The first press conference of the Churchill-Roosevelt talks indicates there will be a strict blanket on news. Newspaper men were called together today for the first time and told that Mr. Churchill had arrived in Canada. References to movements of President Roosevelt or any member of the American delegation were strictly forbidden, newspaper men were told. Although there was no objection to speculation on possible subjects of discussion. And now to local news. Passenger bus for Red Cross. Presentation of a 20-passenger bus, a gift from the Mayor of Caulfield. Six patriotic fun to the Red Cross Society will be outside the Caulfield Town Hall on Friday evening. Mrs. T.W. White will accept the bus for the Society, as well as a cheque for £2,000 and £360 for the Red Cross and POW Fund. Mr. H. H. Cron, administrator for the ACF, accepted a cheque for £2,000 for ACF Christmas hampers. Big plan for centralised hospitals, health centre in Parkville area. One of the first major building works to be undertaken by the state government after the war, according to present plans, will be the erection of a number of new hospital buildings on land adjoining the new Royal Melbourne Hospital at Parkville. To these new buildings are to be transferred the Children's Hospital from its present premises in Ratdown Street, Carlton, Dental Hospital from Spring Street, Queen Victoria Hospital from Lonsdale Street, and possibly the Eye and Ear Hospital from Victoria Parade. To carry out this project in full will necessitate the acquirement of a considerable area of additional land, at present occupied by dwellings, approximately 50 or 60. It will be a huge undertaking and will take some years to complete. The ultimate object is to have all the public hospitals of the city and research institutes also on one central block where they will be conveniently located for the medical profession and medical students as well as the general public. In addition to the city hospital buildings, new hospitals, are to be built in various suburbs, including Brighton, Sandringham, Oakley and Box Hill. And in many country towns already, the government has allocated £2 million for hospital buildings under its post-war reconstruction plan. Mr McFarlane, Minister for Health, announced in the Legislative Assembly on Wednesday that in as much as a great deal of public money was involved, a proper proportion of the new public hospital work was to be carried out by the Public Works Department. This, Mr McFarlane added, would leave a substantial amount of work to private architects. That was the news. More news at 7pm. What good news about the hospitals? Yes, Mother. I might apply to train as a nurse. That would be wonderful, dear. G and H, lunchtime. What are you eating for lunch, Vic? Just sandwiches. Oh, much the same. Can't wait till the new social centre is built next year, sometime. I can get back to eating canteen again. Canteen? Yes, Thomas Shirley told me. Better keep that under your hat. It might not be for general public knowledge. Righto, Cole. Although, I don't think it would be a trade secret. Probably not. Anyway, 
I have thought of a name for our proposed venture. Vicol. Oh, uh, yes. Vic Cole. Yes, a piece of both our names. Vic and Cole. Vicol or Vic Cole, whichever you like to pronounce it. Sounds great. Coyle's house, tea time. Tea is ready, Thelma. Thank you, Mother. For what we are about to receive, may the Lord make us truly thankful. Amen. Amen. Here is the news. Mounting knockout blow against Japan. Quebec conference from Theo Moody, special correspondent of the Argus by wireless from Quebec. Preparations of a knockout blow against Japan this year and the administration of a defeated Germany will be the two main topics for discussion between Mr. Churchill and President Roosevelt. This is the general opinion here, but it is expected that later questions will arise on the delineation of new German frontiers and zones of British, American and Russian control. It is expected also that President Roosevelt and Mr. Churchill will discuss the possibility of settling the Polish-Soviet differences and that there will be a strong bid for a compromise between the two powers. The first press conference of the Churchill-Roosevelt talks indicated that there will be a strict blanket on news. News papermen were called together today for the first time and told that Mr. Churchill had arrived in Canada. References to movements of President Roosevelt and any of the members of the American delegation were strictly forbidden. Although there was no objection to speculation on possible subjects for discussion. And now to local news. State policy on soldiers settlement. Soldier settlement policy of the state government could be summed up in a few words. Mr. Dunstan, Premier, said yesterday, only good quality land is favoured. Rainfall areas or irrigation districts would be made available. Land purchased would be brought at productive values and not at fancy prices. Ex-servicemen would be given an equity in their holdings from the beginning. A careful selection would be made of those to be placed on the land, and they would be encouraged in every way to improve their holdings. Mr. Dunstan said he hopes that the basis of soldier settlements in every state would be decided at the Premier's conference at Canberra on October 3rd. It was essential that there should be no duplication between Commonwealth and states. Rationing cuts. Exemptions from the coal rationing cuts applicable to general industry had been granted to dairies, bakeries and some food factories engaged in processing perishable foodstuffs. Mr. L. L. Birch, Victorian Deputy Director, Department of War Organization of Industry, said last night, apart from the industries mentioned, there had been very few applications for from the coal cuts imposed and by rationing in Victoria. Dead woman identified. The body of a woman aged about 70 who dropped dead on Preston Railway Station on Sunday morning has been identified at the city morgue as that of Sarah Kendall, single, an inmate of Singleton Homes for Women, Islington Street, Colling. That was the news. More news at 11 p.m. Oh my, that poor woman. I wonder what caused her to die like that. I don't know, Mother. Maybe the train arrived on time? Oh, Thelma, that's a bit black. <laughs> Sorry, Mother. TinHuntersTelevision.com, the home of Lion's Den. A great Australian story of one man's 45 years life story inside and outside General Motors Holden. Sundays at 8pm at TinHuntersTelevision.com.